Hello, I will start with our usual 10 minute introduction. Um, Jim and I are speaking to extraterrestrials, our friendly extraterrestrials uh, from different stars. Uh, these are Pleiadians, Lyrans. Um, we recently spoke to uh, people from Sirius. We spoke to people from Galactic Federation of Light. Uh, we had a nice conversation with a reptilian, a friendly reptilian, and a few other races. Um, we also are in contact, and once in a while we speak to an angel from third level, Angel Gahil. And uh, we have spoken several times to a group consciousness called L, E-L. Uh, it's a, an ancient, uh, in, in, on Earth it has been known in ancient times as a god El. Uh, Elohim is just a plural uh, of, of the same thing, of the god El. Uh, the, so the extraterrestrials are preparing for the contact. Um, they elected uh, Yael to be the first race to, uh, to contact us. So we are speaking to uh, a person, one of the organizers of the first open contact, um, his name is Dizdu, or a longer name is Diziakabu Dizdu Da. Uh, and so we are lucky to speak to them. And uh, they delay in that first contact because they don't want to cause a major crisis and major upheaval on Earth. So we are, they are preparing on their side and are waiting for us to invite them or to be more open for the collectively to be more open for the for the open contact. So that will happen. And last plans I heard were to, for that to happen in about a year. Uh, in about a year, that's it. That is in about, uh, at the end of maybe 2014 or so. Um, much needs to be prepared. Basically, they have to say A, and then they have to say B. Basically, they have to really know what, 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 how far do they want to go, and really be prepared. Really have people who understand humans and who can speak to humans in human terms and human language, which is difficult for them. Uh, we started. Jim and I started channeling. Uh, Jim started channeling to me uh, about half a year ago, um, and. Um, that happened during a Reiki session. I will explain what Reiki is. So, because there is so many newcomers, I will have to explain it every time. Reiki is a, a healing art. It's an art of healing people by laying on hands. The energy comes from the middle of the palms and from the fingers. Typical Reiki healing is when you put uh, hands on different parts of the body of the human and send the energy uh, of the patient and send the energy there. Um, the, the word Reiki comes from Japan and Rei means light and Ki means energy, same thing as Chi and Prana. So you're healing with, with Prana energy or Chi energy. Um, so um, it's, it's, it has been known to humans from ancient time. In Bible uh, many healers were mentioned who lay Lay on hands on people and uh, and heal them with with, uh, with their hands. Jesus healed people with, by laying laying his hands on people. We know his uh, channeled student uh, described his way of or her way of healing people. They they put hands like that on on the back on the hump of the person. So they stand behind, invite healing energy in the heart, make make this ball of healing energy of golden healing energy grow in the heart and invite it to to go wherever it's needed in the body to heal uh, to heal the body um, you will see that so 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 we'll repeat that today that seems to work best for us um, so Jim will continue doing Reiki healing on me and I will be laying down and speaking while Jim do, does Reiki and channels uh, that's how it started, and I think there there is. Uh, it's not only Jim going in a trance state. I'm also going in some sort of elevated state, so it brings me closer to extraterrestrials and makes the communications more communication easier. Uh, what is funny then? We switch places, and Jim lays down, and I do Reiki, and um, and then if somebody supposedly powerful comes through him, 
that powerful being would look to you like as uh, they would lay down and I would be in a healing position, healing maybe an angel or a powerful extraterrestrial or uh, an ancient god or somebody. But, but understand that Jim in this case is more like uh, a telephone receiver. So basically I'm speaking to, to them and Jim is is receiving and transmitting the signal. They use his his mind to do that. They they send the messages in more often in more basic way, just ideas, and then they use Jim's ability to translate them in English. Um, and all, very often I notice that they use something even bigger, some clusters of ideas from Jim. So sometimes they, they, uh, it's Jim answering the questions, not them. And I, you have to take that into account. It's not pure extraterrestrial speaking, there is certain percent, tiny percent, but there is certain percent of, of Jim's personality coming through and uh, you have to filter for that. But certainly there was so much proof uh, that it's coming outside of Jim and me that I believe it's real because very often they would say something that I would know and Jim would know and we will find only later find out that what they said was true. So that information comes from from consciousnesses which are much more knowledgeable than, than, than our physical minds here are. Um, the message, uh, so, so the message of, of extraterrestrials, the most important is the news about 2027, the year 2027. So um, I guess the gods, it's the best way to describe it. The gods decided that the earth uh, needs help and the best way they can help us to survive, our race to survive, is by wiping out our current economy and political system in 2027. They picked that date for multiple reasons, but basically the Earth has to prepare for that and um, they have to pre prepare for that. And they wouldn't do it with their hands, they would just slowly release the information which would um, hint the humans to um, to, just, to, to basically start decomposing our systems and and in 2027 they, they predict there will be about up to five months of downtime, meltdown of economy where where will be uh, economy will be not there, uh, the electricity might go away so we'll have sort of a dark time in 2027, in 13 years from now and their prediction is that uh, people will will die, some will lose about half of population. So if, if by that time we have 8 billion, we'll lose 4 billion of people just due to local violence in big cities. So they will warn us in advance, they will, will have pre plenty of warning and they would advise the humans to leave big cities and go in rural, rural areas where it is safer. And those who will fail to leave big cities might, might get killed in local violence. Uh, they would prevent big wars, but they wouldn't prevent local violence. That's what they say. Um, I take it seriously. First, I didn't believe that. I thought it was just one of the scenarios, but uh, all contacts who we speak to are uh, confirming about that. We confirm the message of L that that's their plan, and that's their uh, very likely scenario. So after accepting the fact of that, I still refuse refuse to accept the, the high percent of loss of casualties. I think we have a good chance to reduce the, the loss of humans and the suffering from 50 percent to much lower percent, hopefully to very minimal percent. And I put a lot of hope in, uh, in the first contact, first open of official contact which will come soon. That's my main hope, that the aliens just by their speaking to us by teaching us might help awakening the humanity, help the transformation. We might reform our economy and political system beforehand. We don't have to break it down completely. We might be able to prepare better and be more, it would, could be more of evolution than revolution. It could be more reform than breakdown. So that's my message. Uh, after, after that breakdown, they will help us to build a new system and they say that the money will go away, at least in that, in that status as they are now. They will be 
no money is there. Banks will be there, but they will be distributing wealth in some other sort of way, and I don't understand, I don't understand how. How do they do that? Maybe electronically, maybe something else. Um, the military, I would say, would have a lot of work even after the transformation. It's not for military to fear that they will be completely wiped and the aliens will control the Earth. Uh, just the opposite. The aliens say they will not take the control, they, w they don't want to be responsible for us, and they understand that for them to take control would be a f a fut futile. The humans have to decide for themselves what they want. It has to be humans who take control and reform the things. So they will be the here as advisors, they will be speaking to us down on earth and up in the skies, and we'll slowly open, uh, open our a world awareness to the galactic community and will enter galactic community as a new member eventually. So 2027 is around the time when, when it's going to happen. Towards that, there is a lot of need to, to help the aliens to understand us and help the humans, the global human population to understand the aliens. There is a huge gap in understanding. Uh, the biggest of the gap is lack of telepathy. The aliens are telepathic and they are, most of them are from fourth dimension and we are from third dimension, non-telepathic. Uh, towards that, we, I proposed uh, that they take some of us and create a settlement up there and to start, community, uh, start a contact up there. Uh, and when they take people, these who have to be volunteers. I am very certain that just abducting the humans without the permission is not right. So uh, our condition is that they have to take volunteers who volunteer to establish a human settlement, a human colony up there on their ships, on their planets, somewhere in designated places and develop the open contact. So they listened to me and half a year ago they, they took the first volunteers and by now there are over four colonies, mostly on their motherships in solar system and over 200 people have gone, visited and returned back to Earth. They, they take people only temporarily, only one person stays there long term, all others visit for short term, they are absent from the Earth only for a few minutes, but uh, on the mothership they stretch these few minutes to about two weeks and that's how people go up and down. And so you spend two weeks here, then you go there, spend two weeks there and come back to the to about the time when you left and you continue like like that line hmm. tum, tum, tum. up there two weeks down here two weeks up there so the gap there and here is very small that's that's what i understand and we speak to them every week to the organizers and even to the colonists through the channeler again through jim so we know the news so currently there is about 100 people up there in the colonies and the main, uh, one of the main activities there is meditation and learning the telepathy. They take the talented psychics, talented telepaths and teach them telepathy. And so far, uh, over about eight or nine people have developed telepathy sufficient enough to speak to the aliens telepathically. And that was a major breakthrough that proved to the aliens that we are not hopeless, that we can make it, that uh, we it just takes training to for us to develop telepathy. Also, it explained to them how we think, what are, what is our emotions, and why we behave the way we behave, uh, very barbarically. But you know there is a good component in us, and also a very wild animal component. And now they understand much more of that. They understand the level of deception. They understand brainwashing, and they take that into account when they prepare for the contact. So to, jo to visit the, the aliens, you can apply online. They read very easily, they read our online applications. You don't even have to provide your name, you can just write your application and then they, then they can trace you very easily and find who you are. Even human secret services can do that, but for aliens it's even easier. Uh, the application can be of any generic form, basically you have to volunteer to go there and show the level of commitment, shall show the understanding. Um, it is a misconception that they can read our minds. They can read our, our emotions, but not minds. So 
if you want to say something to them, say that in writing, that they, that they understand better. So to, to submit the application, uh, go to uh, http humancolony.org, humancolony.org, and there you can submit the, uh, the application um, either anonymously or you can put your name. It's up to you. Join our site. We have a nice community. There, are, uh, there is about 10 to 15 active members who uh, visit the site every day and discuss the news, do the research about different aliens and compare what we learned from Jim to what we learned from other sources. Uh, we accept donations. Donations really help, help us and motivate us to move forward. They show your support. So far, we received two hundred fifty dollars, and thank to thank uh, I thank everyone who donated. Last fifty dollars we received a few days ago, and it was a great uh, incentive to do more of the broadcast. So we record another channel in today, thanks to the donor. And this was the first donor who submitted fifty dollars from Czech Republic, and we never met them before. We don't know who that is. So that was an anonymous donation. What was very I mean, we know the name, but we don't know who that is. So that was something new to us. Visit our YouTube channel. Uh, the keyword to find us is very easy, Hukala. If you abbreviate human colony to Hukala, Hukala, uh, you can easily find us. It's a unique word which finds our videos. Uh, we welcome the invitations to, do, uh, to go somewhere else and uh, present in person the channeling session to a group of people so you can ask your questions. So uh, we are located in uh, Rochester, New York, close to Toronto. We can drive around or can we, we can even fly if you buy the ticket. So a ticket, two-way ticket to Sedona costs $350. So, so think if you can uh, find the money or if you can assemble enough audience to pay the tickets, we would be happy to consider coming. Jim also um, is available for private channeling sessions. He charges $40 per half an hour, which is very typical for channelers. And um, you can do it through telephone or video Skype. There is many more things to discuss, but uh, please join our site and discuss it on the website. We will do more of the channelings. Uh, now we'll lay down and Jim will start doing Reiki and then if there is any private information, I'll cut out. So, and also, if there is silence pauses, don't be surprised that our video is heavily cut. We remove all silence pauses so it's easier for you to get the information without waiting for every new word which is coming. Sometimes they're coming very slow. And today is snow, so the energy here is snow wind, so the energy is, you know, relaxed and very slow. Um, have fun and. Um, I will do a final word after that. Now Jim and I will do channeling session. I will ask questions and Jim will channel whoever comes. We invite Jesus Christ, any gods, angels, higher beings, any representative from any friendly civilization, anyone who wouldn't harm Jim coming through his body. And um, that's about it. It is time that I arrive in this format. Hello. Hello. This format seems to collect beings of higher vibration and light. Are you Jesus? Yes. Welcome, Jesus. I have promised to come. Thank you for coming. Yes. I waited for you for a long time. This format is not something that I am doing often, but I find it important. Great. The words that I must say to you all today, those who will listen, will be the ones who need to listen, are not new words, but they are words of importance and joy. I come from perpetual joy and when I come here, I see the grief, and I see the sorrow, and I see the needs. 
but be comforted that you won't have to bear them forever. There are reasons for your needs, there are reasons for your wants and desires. You must learn. If, if I can, gave you miracles every day, you would not appreciate them. But the small miracles seem to work out the best. And you know what I mean by that. But let me talk about your community of light workers. I'm thrilled that so many of you are coming along in the light. You can even get closer to a community by sharing your story with those around you. When I tell you story, I mean tell them about who you really are. Hold nothing back, for if they are challenged by your story, then they need more light. And you can give it to them. Let me explain. There are things in each human that are dark. It's there from the beginning. It's because of how you are made, where you are made, and the things around you. It's intentional. Yes, I know, it seems like a bad thing to do, but no. It's a learning tool, it's a learning curve to bring you to understandings for the sake of other people and yourself. If you have things within you, a story to tell to someone else, include the darkness as well, because they have darkness within them as well. And you know what? Get rid of it. If you can't tell someone, tell me. And then get rid of it. Get rid of that darkness. Forgive yourself for it. Because you need to be as close to light as you can be in this day and age. And as you become closer to light, people will see that their stories will not be taken as a joke. And they will not laugh whenever you tell their, your story to them, and vice versa. This will unite your souls in the light, which is far greater than a friendship. When your souls are united, you cannot help but rise. Oh, not to say that you'll be perfect, and not to say that there won't be difficulties and lessons to learn, but it is to say that in your times of grief, you will have something to fall back on. That you will find something in you that is stronger than the earthly body, than, stronger than the earthly emotions, stronger than the most earthly mindsets. It will be in your spirit and it will light a light within you. Do you understand that? I am sure that you've heard my parables in the Old Testament and New Testament about different kinds of wisdom to be portrayed through clever twists of words and visions. But within your culture at this time, I would just be straightforward and tell you that the light is there. And the closer to the light you get, the less you'll need of anything else. Yes, my disciples were all good men when I was back there on earth, and it seems like just yesterday. They were simple men. They were good men. But they learned how to use the light. They learned how to be strong in the light. There was no more fear within them. There was only joy in passing the light on to others. And you can see that if you read that, if you can understand where they're coming from. They did not need wealth. They did not need a lot of possessions. But what they got helped them survive. And they survived well. Back to the future, where we are now. Hmm. Let me talk about another thing that troubles me about your planet. Oaths and promises and words. I would like you to make sure 
that the words that come out of your mouth are pure. Because this is your legacy, the golden truth that comes out of your mouth. The spoken oath, the promise, keep these. If you keep these oaths and promises and agreements, then you will be respected and known as an honorable person. This is true light because it will bring light to your life. It will bring energy to you because your word will be golden. And this will help dig out any darkness within you because you want to be honest and you know those things that you keep behind that are unforgiven and unshown and kept in dark spaces. They hold you back. You must let them go. In any way that you find necessary to let them go, let them go. Yes, be not troubled. Because you know there is someone, there is someone that will listen. I will listen. But to speak the words to someone else and have them understand and not put you down is a wonderful thing. And this is the kind of community that you need to be a part of. You need to be a part of a purer community. Oh, there will be some that still harbor things, but yet they will understand where you are coming from. They will understand the light and how I come into the scene, so to speak. Yes, I am energy. I do not die and I am joy and I am love and I am happiness. But I can also be part of sorrow to lift you out of it. Does that make sense to you? I can be anything. But what I want to be, love, joy, and strength, hope, and happiness for your lives. Light to light up your pathway so that you can move forward and not just stay in one space. Does that make sense to you? Also, I see that there is contempt for politics and society. Do not hate anything. Do not hate it. Accept that it is there. You do not have to accept that it is good, but you do not have to hate. Hate is unnecessary. Hate is unnecessary. That is something that you will need to learn to move up in your vibrations. Some of you have already grasped that concept. Some of you are far beyond that, which I love. And I respect you for that. And I give you my blessing for that. But there are those of you who find contempt and hate as part of your lives still. You must not hate. How do you get rid of hate? Learn that these are the acts of men and women who do not know the light that you know, that do not understand the truth about the universe, and then forgive them and welcome them if they should come to you. Do not accept all that they have to say. You can be righteously opposed, but not in hate. Not in hate. Not in hate. For that is a lower vibration that we don't want any part of. And the less we have a part of it, the better. I'm not just saying that you'll ever reach a perfect light in this world. It is impossible. There's too much darkness here. But you can escape it more than you have to accept it. <sighs> My children, the people of Earth, I understand what you're going through now. It's a time of change, but change is inevitable, and change is for the good. Even though it may not seem so at the time, 
Changes, changes will always come. And so learn to accept them. There are those of you that change is your burden. You do not want to change. You like the way things are now. Learn that the light moves with you and grows with you. It's part of the change. It's part of who you are. A change is fine. Whether it seems good or bad or indifferent, a change is fine for you. Learn it with love. Learn it with understanding and joy. And see what it may bring you as far as benefits. Do not always look at the part that looks negative. There may be benefits that you do not see. Search for them. Seek and you shall find. And with that I say, thank you for listening. I am very happy that the world is coming to a place where I can speak to those of you with light in your hearts and not be shunned as someone who is just out there speaking their mind. But you will take it to heart and you will feel the energy of love and joy and understanding as you have never felt it before. I only wish that some of you were here so that I could touch you and let you feel and learn and understand the energy that comes with the purity of light, which you will someday know. But in this world, you must learn, you must learn, you must learn and keep growing. As I have told my disciples many times, don't doubt. But it's easy for humanity to doubt. It's very easy. But we can move beyond that. And I want to thank you for listening. And for right now, I will say goodbye. But I will perhaps come again. Because there's so much to tell. But let that sink in for now. Because I see where you are in the world. And I see you gathering and becoming more uniform all the time. And I just want to say blessings to you. Talk to me if you cannot talk to any other, and I will listen. Have a blessed day. Jim? Yes. Hey, Jim. Did you hear it? I heard a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Whew. You want to lay down? No, I'm okay. I just have to... I feel real... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I want to laugh. <laughs> so, very, very okay, joyful. So, finally, we got Jesus coming. <laughs> I didn't hear everything he said, but he seemed pretty, he was very happy, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's recorded fine. Oh, good. Whew. Okay, where was I doing? I think I was doing hard. <laughs> you will see the result, maybe that was a good rate. Yeah. How long did he talk? Doesn't matter. About 12 minutes, maybe? Really? Only? But it was very excited speech. Oh. Very good speech. Okay. He came through without any trouble, that's for sure. Yeah. He wasn't... He didn't seem to be bogged down by anything. Uh-huh. I wish to ask him tons of questions, but obviously he wasn't... He wasn't ready to dialogue. Oh, okay. I guess he wanted the first message to be high vibration and obviously my questions would be way lower vibration full of worries <laughs> oh perhaps he understood that yeah you know? mm. 
I do feel better than I did. His presence was very healing in many senses. Thanks, Jesus. Huh? Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. He seemed to be very happy, which made me happy. <laughs> So he said he his sayings are even in Old Testament, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I sensed that he had a lot more to say, but he decided that he wasn't going to, that he would just let what he said this time be the message. Mm -hmm. And he had more. He could have gone on for a while longer. I could tell. Mm -hmm. He just sort of stopped, not suddenly, but he wound down. There are other channelers who channel Jesus, so mm -hmm. it's not the first time he speaks. No. No. In the recent times. I'm excited that he went through me, though. Yep. That makes me happy. Uh-huh. That makes me very happy. Max. Hello. <laughs> It's Lakesh. Oh, Lakesh, long time not here. How are you? Welcome. Ah, do you realize you have a fairy in the room? No. Um, son. Son. Oh, she's welcome to come through anytime. Um, she's very popular among all listeners. Well, she's very cold outside. <laughs> she can come in. When she comes to this dimension, she's she cannot come to this dimension except to come indoors. Uh -huh. So that's why she is here. She wants to listen and she wants to stay fairly warm. Uh -huh. <laughs> is it male or female fairy? Female. Uh huh. I believe you are a female, correct? Oh yes. Uh huh. Thanks. So what's new in your world? I see you were just talking to Jesus. Yay. That was interesting. Everyone can learn from him. He has high words. What did you ask? No, there was no conversation. You have lots of questions, though. All right, are you ready for the questions? Some of them. OK, first would be the reptilian. So our friend Edmund is a child captured by reptilians. That is correct. What's in captivity. In captivity. Was it born in their place or it was captured later? It was captured later. At what age was it captured? About seven. And how old is it now? Is he now? In what years? Yours? Human. He's in his thirties. So it was 23 years of captivity. The first couple years of captivity was very bad, but mm -hmm. it got softer because they were looking for a trade in for information for the person, uh -huh. the hybrid, and that did not happen. Uh huh. So, is he educated? How does he live? He was not educated till recently. I mean, they started his education very late, but they find him unique, and they've discovered that the best thing for them to do would be to use him as a tool for learning. How healthy is he? At this time, he's fine. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Does he have a, you know, someone to communicate? Are they talking to him? Yes, they are talking to him. So he, he has learned their language. So basically he grows up in reptilian culture. Yes, not, not the best culture for a humanoid type person to grow up in. And uh, what, are the, what is his genetics? That is, I don't know actually. So he's not a human reptilian type? No. I am, not, I am not aware of what he is. That has not been released to me. But from which culture was it uh, captured? His, well, of course, you know that his father was human. We know that part. Yes. We're not quite sure who the hybrid part is. Uh-huh. 
So, but it is humanoid. So he was captured seven years old. Mm-hmm. Where did he live before? He was on Era. Oh, how could they steal him from Era? At the time when he was captured, there was an an upheaval on the planet uh, uh, that took their attention away from some of the things that they had been more interested in and threw light on social events and they were able to infiltrate and take him then. And he was the only one that they were able to take. So they only got one. But uh, somebody said that they have multiple multiple captives yes but they're not from era uh-huh they do have multiple captives that's true how oh, many are there um they did not release a number but we know of at least 20. Uh-huh. and so that is under their jurisdiction and it's they're very quiet and secretive about everything are they in the solar system? Not this one. So what is that culture? The reptilian culture? Yeah. What do you mean, what is it? It's uh, a reptilian culture. What star are they from? I am not allowed to say. Okay. Uh, is there any progress in uh, releasing them? I'm not allowed to say that either. I see. All right, so next question is, let's see, um, he got a message, download, red triangles and black, blank white spaces, which moved from right to left with different speeds. Mm-hmm. What language is that? Let me check. Red triangles and what? <coughs> white spaces. That is a reptilian language. Ah. Yes. Interesting. All right, stigmata. Do you have any comment on uh, Ed's stigmata? Stigmata is traces of nails in his hands. That would be the nail marks of Jesus in his hands. Did Jesus have nail marks? Up here. Did he? Yes. They did not put the nail in his hand because it would rip out. Ah. They put it in his wrists so that it would he could be held solidly to the cross. I see. So when they see the stigmata in the hands, it is representative of the time that he was hanging on the cross. However, it's not realistic that they would put the nail there. Okay. It would rip out. Okay. It's too fragile to hold the body. Okay. That way, and they also put the feet together and put it through both of the feet at one time. Okay. So that it would be more stable. All right. Do you understand? Yes. It's a scary part. I don't want to focus on it. Any meaning for Edmund about that stigmata? What does it symbolize? It symbolizes to me, I'm not sure what it would symbolize to him, but in my estimation, it would mean that he was deeply in prayer and transformed into a holy being. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, Starseed Apprentice. Do you know this person on the website? Starseed's Apprentice. I've seen that website, but I have not gone through every website. There are millions. No. On our website, Mm -hmm. there is a new member, which is very knowledgeable about Pleiadians. He Mm -hmm. wrote about uh, Aaron culture, several posts, very interesting ones. Okay. Can you trace that person and find what's his connection to the aliens? Does he have alien children, uh, extraterrestrial children? Does what, is he a hybrid? That sort of thing. Ah. Oh. One moment. Thank you. Starseed. Starseed's apprentice wrote a few chapters on play aliens on our side. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. He uses more than one alias. Of course. 
Starseed is one. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time he's written to you. Okay. And also, his in his connection is strong. He does know a lot about the Pleiadians, and he is a hybrid. Is the Pleiadian hybrid? Yes, he is. What's the percent of Pleiadian DNA? He has 18.5% alien DNA. That's lots. Um, what's his vibration level, he asks? He is at a 4.8. Wow. Much respect. Um, does he have hybrid children up there? If he does not, he will someday. He is being looked at as a hybrid father. Uh, is uh, there recent incarnations on other planets? Does he have recent incarnations on other planets? I do not know. Let me check. He does not wish to share that information. That's fine. Uh, now, next person is Joseph, and Joseph apparently have been frequented on Gray's ships from the website. Can Joseph. You, can you trace Joseph? There is a photograph of his. One moment. They were not Yu Yo ships. Mm -hmm. They were either Grail or Zeta. Grail. Grail or Zeta. All right, and there he posts a photograph which looks like the person he saw. What, which, which of the races is that? From, it is a drawing. No, it is a photograph. It does not look like a real photograph to me. Okay. One moment. Is it dark and there is a white, gray bean with big eyes, almost no nose? It's a grail. A grail? Yes. Looks or like a Zeta. <laughs> You're not. It, I cannot tell from this picture. Ah, a it is similar. It there are parts of both. What's the difference between grails and Zetas? Well, the eyes are definitely Zetas, but some of the other features are not. That photograph is from a little. YouTube movie where this gray alien is captured by some non English speaking people, I think Spanish people, and they laugh at him and take photographs of him through a door, uh, eye in the door, through an opening in the door. And he tries to say with his mouth the word mama, like mama. A very, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, unfairness in that video. Do you know Did this video? No? Let me check. Alright. I've seen many videos of this type. I've been told that some parts of this video are not correct. That it's been edited. Oh. So the laughter, angry laughter wasn't real? It sounded very natural. The angry laughter was real. Oh. There was almost nothing to see there. It was very little to see. Yes, there was very little to see. The rest of that film has been deleted. So what is the race? Do you, can you tell now from the video? That is Zeta Grays. Zetas? Yes. So he looks like 4 feet or 4.5? Yes. Ah. But I see now why that it seemed confusing. So what's the difference between grails and zetas? Grails have smaller eyes. Uh -huh. They're a little bit more scaly. Uh -huh. And this picture looks somewhat scaly to me. I see. So what politically, what's the difference? What do grails do in relation to Earth? Grails are actually just observers right now, and they have taken some interest in studying human nature and beings, but they are not actively involved in saving the Earth. I see. But they are not actively involved in destroying the Earth either. Thanks for that. They are neutral. Uh-huh. 
So glares and clairs are different, right? Yes. Clairs are slightly more violent. Violent. Slightly more analytical and would be apt to do something more harmful because they they just use their intellect more than their emotions. They're not a, attached to the human emotion. They're not attached to the human look. And so they can be quite brutal. So Claire's are taller? Claire's are taller. Six feet? Not quite. Uh-huh. So uh, the que one of the questions was, how do we know that Zenda is a male? Is Was Zenda a male? Zenda? Yeah. The one who spoke? Yeah, the Zeta Zenda. Yes. Was a male. Uh, how do females look in this society? They're slightly smaller. They are slightly a little more petite. However, they are, they lack all the gray tones that the male have. They uh, they are slightly lighter colored. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Returning to Joseph. So, what are the same standard questions for him? Uh, what is his genetics? He's a hybrid. Is it Pleiadian gray? Joseph, let me find him. Thank you. A wonderful human being. Ah. Yes, he's Pleiadian. What percent? About 15%. Wow. Is he an abductee? A regular abductee? A regular back team? Abductee, abductee. Oh, abductee. I see, okay. He's not. Oh, he sounded he, like he is frequent on... Dirt he dirt. is frequently visited, but he is... And the... It would appear that he's abducted, but he's actually not anywhere. He, they have put him into a holographic state where he can see things that he wouldn't usually see, so they... that he, it would appear that he's somewhere else, but he is still there. Uh, so what's their mission? Would he, should he allow these contacts? They are not harming him in any way. So it's more positive? Yeah, it's more positive because what they are, they are learning from him is higher vibrational uh, thoughts, patterns of humans, which they uh, would like to see in more people. They have found him to be quite a positive specimen. What's his frequency? He is very high as well. He's about 4.8 as well. Wow! We have high frequency friends. Very good. Um, any hybrid children does he have? He has no hybrid children. All right. But, but not to say that he won't. These people who are looking at him, the Zetas, would like to use him as a hybrid but they have not done so yet. Going next to Intrepid Star, can you trace her, Intrepid Star? One moment. What is her question? Did you find her? I found an area where that she could be. I can give you the name and then I'll just delete it from the video. So the name is... Yes. All right, so st standard questions. Um, is she hybrid? She has a small percent of hybrid in her, yes. Pleiadian? She has two small percentage of... She is one, an unusual hybrid because she has two different alien hybridizations within her. This was when there was a bond between the greys and the reptilians for a short period of time. She has a very small amount of reptilian DNA and a very small amount of grey as well. They wow. were afraid to use too much for fear it would change the outer appearance too much. Wow. So it would be three and four percent 
of each. So that's 7% hybrid. Wow, she is afraid that she's being possessed by reptilians. And that corresponds to what you just said. Yes. So can you expand on that? Yes. Reptilian DNA is a possessive kind of hybridization in many senses because they are so different physiologically. It would appear that you would be possessed by reptilians. You would have actually some of their thought processes, even though there's such a small amount of their hybridization, 3%, they still have a great deal of mental control even at that percent. So that would see, up here, make it appear that they are possessing her. However, she does not have to accept their thought processes, but it is part of her DNA at this point mm -hmm. to be have reptilian kind of thoughts. So they, she uses Arcturian downloads to clear up this possession. Arcturian downloads are very wise. That's very wise. She asks, what is her mission? Her mission? Yes. This is... One moment. Ah! Oh. I will tell her at some other state. We must talk. Excellent. I cannot tell her on a broadcast. We can delete it if, if we can... I, I would not want to talk, talk about that now. It's involved. Okay. Excellent. Uh, what's your frequency? Hers is moving up, but it's at 4.35. Excellent. Um, now, um, the reptilian side of her keeps her vibration a little lower than it could be. Uh, not that the not that these not that, that it's a bad a vibration. However, she thinks of it as bad sometimes, and that makes it lower. Well, so please embrace it because it will not go away. But please do. Remember that you are human, and that you will always be human, and that you your uh, your uh, vibration depends on you accepting who you are. Does she have hybrid children? Um, no. Uh, has she been abducted? Has she been abducted? Yes. How frequently? She was abducted many years ago. Um. But not recently. Um, does she have implants? 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 Yes. All most humans have implants at this time. A most lot of them. Humans. Most enlightened humans. What total percent of population would have implants? What percent of total population would have implants? Oh, probably four to five percent. In America or worldwide? Worldwide. Wow. No, should she worry about implants messing up with her? No. They are made not to mess up with you. They are made to be part of a, an experimental system that should work just as well with your system as any other part of your body. Yes. Now, um, in a case that they become disturbed or infected or something, they will be removed. Oh, is she monitored by Yale? She's monitored by more than one species, yes. Grukvignir is four species, so uh -huh. yes. She is also monitored by a re the reptilians. Um, the good ones or bad ones? The ones that she's hybrid with. Ah, the good ones or bad ones? Well, should she reject this uh, contact or not? It's, she cannot reject it. It's part of who she is. She cannot reject it. I say accept it and make it human. Make it as human as possible. Don't revolt against that? Don't revolt against your... You can't revolt against who you are. It's part of who she is. No, but monitoring is something from outside. Yes, monitoring is is not a problem. You let them monitor but all they But maybe they, they possess her and send her bad, bad thoughts. They do not possess her. They only monitor her. and But they monitor her in such a way to see how the hybridization has gone and also how her mind is working with the reptilian DNA and the yil or not well the the gray uh, hybridization uh -huh. so 
how they work together, and this is part of their studies. But, but the bad reptilians captured uh, Edmund's child. Yes. So would it be the same reptilians that uh, monitor you or a different reptilian? I have to ask these do if I'm allowed to say. Please do. There are ramifications to the answer. That's why I cannot say. Okay. Um, I will tell her not to be afraid. All right. Um, I will move forward, I guess. Wow. Kareli. Uh, can you trace Coralie? Coralie? Yeah. What is her question? Standard personal questions. Uh, does she have hybrid children? One. Wow, that, that is important. Can you tell more? It's deceased. Oh, she had and it's deceased now. I see. It was unsuccessful in the sense that it lived only a short time. But yes, they were. In, there was an attempt at a hybridization. However, they learned much from that, and they found that your DNA is very suitable for hybridization. It was not at all your fault that what happened. Um, I am saddened by that experience. How long was the? Uh, how old was the child? It was only a couple months old. Before the birth. Before the death. It had been born and... Oh, two months old. Two okay. months old. Oh, um, what is her genetic... How much of alien DNA does she have? Nine percent. Pleiadian? Yes. Um, they, were, they are no longer taking samples of hybridization humans without permission. Uh -huh. Another thing that has happened within the last year or so. Yes. Uh, so it was uh, Gorkfetnir hybridization. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, is he? Is she? Has has she, has she been taken? Was she was she taken for that? Personally, physically? No, she. It was done in her sleep. So she did, she wasn't physically taken. She wasn't physically taken to get the DNA sample. No. Right. It, they actually took an egg. Yes. From her, yes. All right. So, any advice for her right now? What's your frequency? Her frequency is four point five. Wow. Nice catch today. We have very high frequencies. Yes, frequencies have gone up. You have to remember that frequencies are uh, relative. They fluctuate within time periods. Right now, we're at a even though it's very cold, there's a high fluctuation of um, frequencies. And it's due to the fact that um, when it is this cold, people huddle together, want to be closer to each other, and that tends to raise frequencies. Really? Yes. Wow. So, um, I need to give her some encouragement. Uh, what is she... In, uh, has, 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 did she have uh, alien visitations, experiences? Yes, she had many, actually. Many? Yes. Because she wasn't sure if aliens were real, and she wanted some confirmations. Yes, she had some... There were some dreams that she had that were very unusual that she remembered that were that she couldn't place what was going on there, and those were due to alien uh, visitations. And also, um, there was one time when she would jolt her awake at night, and that was a visitation as well. They didn't mean to wake her, but they did. So, so is she primarily monitored by Grokfetnir, or are there are some other races which are interested in her? Actually, Grokfetnir is the only one that has been around her. Excellent. So she is in good hands, basically. Yes. And they wouldn't mess with her without her permission. Not at this point. That's very good news. <laughs> and not at this point. <laughs> That's a bad answer. <laughs> so, um, 
If, but if she wants to, she might apply and us and get more involved, right? Yes, that's fine. Oh, so she had a funny question. She lives in a big city. Yes. And she wonders how would the aliens find her in such a big city? Very easily. They have ways of finding um, those people with hybridization uh, DNA without hardly any problem. Do they use implants to find her? Implant, implants is one way. They use implants, they use uh, a DNA uh, detectors. And different it's things. like in Star Trek. Uh, they they look at the ship from the distance and say there are signs of life. Blah blah blah. That's right. Perfect. Yes. Easy. All right. Uh, new member Heath. H E A T H. Heath. Heath, Heath. Uh, asks not personal questions and Lulu joins her. Would it is help saving o oceanic life? Yes. Really. Yes, all life is connected, so we connect all life. So they would connect all life. This is the way of the universe. When it comes to alien species, most planets are connected. They realize that one species is connected to another in some way, and one form of life on their planet is, is connected to the plants, the animals, the water, the sea, the sky. So yes, if they would want to save their planet, they have to save those in the water as well. So the, the aliens, like friendly aliens, Gurk Fitnir, is helping with the saving the oceanic species, sea and, species. And you might find this interesting, but the oceanic species are actually helping the land people grow and help, they are helping the land people succeed. So, that with their communications to their specific gods and species. Excellent. So, there was a communication saying, so somebody asked why there are so many dolphins or birds are dying. And the channel being answered that it's time for them to leave the planet because the planet is evolved into something else. That is true for some species, also for some tree species, plant species, rodent species, insect species. Um, it goes for all different forms of life because you're growing and changing so quickly that they cannot keep up. It's just like in the prehistoric era. We don't have the same trees and plants as we did when we were on, on the early parts of our planet. And same with you. You don't have the same growth animals at, at, at the same part. So Why did our dinosaurs die? They, they have predicted that pretty accurately on your planet. So oh, that was... It, was a, me it was a meteor. It was a large meteor. It was... Uh, so it was natural? It was a natural thing. And then... At, at, and then just right after that, the Earth flipped over. So it, that it, it threw the axis off really a lot, and that and it caused the Earth to flip. Were so, our dinosaurs intelligent, civilized? Um, no, not really. Were they they were, they were familial, which means they, some of them had families that that they cared for. And they were herders, some of them as well. Uh -huh. And in that sense, they were social. They were very social. Yeah, we have animals um, that are social. Very social creatures, but not highly intelligent. Did we have uh, civilized reptilians ever living on our planet? In any not civilized. They've been visiting. Visiting. But they do not... Did they not set up a civilization? No. They li they lived among the cultures for several years at times. Ah. You find them in the cultures of the Mayans and the Egyptians. Ah. So, because, oh, you see their pictures on the walls of, of different things. Wow. I have lots more. Oh, no, I wanted the 
Talking about extinctions, the hominoids, other human counterparts, were extinct when Homo sapiens evolved. Uh, who was responsible for, uh, for extinguishing them? Was it Homo sapiens that extinguished them, or there were some other reasons? There was absolutely more than one reason. There was some natural causes in that, but there was also a war going on in your in your solar system. So part of the extinction of the human race had to do with the battle coming to Earth. Really? So, yes, in some places. Now, the more natural causes finished them off, but it was... So the battle, can you tell about more who was fighting who? It was more in your northern regions of the Russian Siberian area. But in solar system, who were what civilizations did fight? I am not allowed to say, but ah. there, there's, there is still conflicts between them, so that is not something that we're allowed to speak of. All right. Um, but th let me tell you that they did have raging battles on from the Earth into the sky, and large areas of the planet were affected. It's like Indian stories, Hindu stories. Really? Okay. Well, Hindu stories are full of battles of gods who ride Bayanas. Oh, ah, yes. All right. Yes, well, these are, I'm not familiar with those stories right at the second. I can probably put my finger on them. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. Anything more about that? They're, they're pretty, they're, they're, they're actually gods. somewhat accurate. <laughs> they have gods which are blue skinned. Yes. Yes. Were the, were these blue Pleiadians, the blues? They were Pleiadians, yes, since you guessed. Oh, yeah, here there was a discussion. Uh, Starseed's Apprentice posted the whole story about errands. Can you read it and say where it's from or where, where is it correct? Oh, his, I've already read it. Uh -huh. Where is he wrong or where is it correct? Um, There's only s small variations. Oh, what are you doing? I don't have to fix it. Uh, there are small variations, but his story is fairly accurate. There are some inaccuracies, but they're not worth pointing out because they're not really um, important. So the question is, um, the Pleiadians took their alphabet from the Earth? Some forms of it, some parts of it. Really? So they were that prominent on the earth for some time, the Pleiadians. Was it in Hindu region? Yes. And the Hebrew alphabet is rel related to Pleiadian alphabet? There are some parts of it that are, yes. Are Hebrews related to Pleiadians? Um, not exactly, no. Are Sumerian related to Pleiadians? More closely. But they're also related to Syrians. How is it possible? More closely. That's all I can say. Aha. Uh -huh. Not that it's real close, but it's more closely than the other. <laughs> uh, so the, the blue-skinned Hindu gods were blue Pleiadians. But not your species, the other blue Pleiadians. Yes. Were there Arcturians also physically present? At one time, yes. At the same historical time as Hindus? Before that time. Before that time. Are they blue skinned? <sighs> I haven't seen an Arcturian for quite a while, but the pictures that I've seen of them, some of them do have blue skin, yes. Because somebody said that that he saw the movie Avatar. Are you familiar with the movie Avatar? Yes. And these were Arcturians. They this was one look for the Arturians many centuries ago. That's exciting. Finally, we get some idea what how Arturians might look like. But he says that he sees them now. Um, uh, yeah, he says that he sees them now. He is They're using their ancient look to communicate with him. Ah, that is interesting. Yes. So Mike is asking about. Soul selling, selling the soul to negative entities. Soul selling? Yes, like making a contract and selling the soul to a devil or to other negative entities. 
It can be done, but who would want to do that? Oh, if you get riches for that, people do that for you all the time. Or if you can save some other person, you can say, sell your soul. And there is a lot of stories about that. And uh, Yes, I've read some of your selling your soul to the devil. And we believe that our rulers just... It's did. not the devil that you're selling your soul to. Okay. You're selling your soul to other entities for their use. Uh-huh. And it's the... They just come in that way if they think that you're vulnerable to that kind of thought process. I do not know how they get riches for that because usually aliens do not have power over your economy. However, they might have some sort of manipulation that I am not aware of. Yeah, by the way, why doesn't Girk Fitnir use, and use their beam technology to beam some gold to us, maybe from under the earth? I do not know. <laughs> this is, it would be very easy, right? It would seem so. It would be highly questioned. <laughs> All right, so selling the soul is sort of real, but you can become rich for that. But yeah, uh, I would just, would I find it illogical. But, of course, I find humans, in many occasions, illogical. So... So, uh, the story is that maybe our rulers, our negative MIC rulers, might be selling their souls. Is it possible? Is it fa the fact? If they do not believe they are selling their souls, but they do actions that would be part of a ritual that would sell their soul, yes. So, if they do as m the incomplete actions of the ritual, which they might be tricked into doing, and signing their name at the end, it's very possible. Are they controlled by aliens, by reptilians and others? Yes, in some forms, yes. But they, they are led to believe that this was an, a human idea, not one from outside their Earth, because it's been happening for so many years, and the aliens didn't get involved until later, but actually it was started by aliens as well. So they were part of the formation, but they did not make themselves known as part of the formation. That is the, that is the, the deception part, because they came in later as we'll try to help you kind of people or species, and actually they're the, we created you, now we're going to help you even more. <laughs> So these are mostly reptilians, right? Yes, mostly. And they can disguise themselves to look a little better than they really do in, uh -huh. in reality. Will so greys participate in that? They were going to participate in that, but then uh, they did not. Would the uh, lower level people, like uh, we have witchcraft, black magic, and among the you know, lower level people, just yes. grassroots mm -hmm. black magic, would they also participate in such rituals and have actually sell their souls? Those people would, yes. So, when you sell a soul, does it mean that this, your higher self is not reaching the body and somebody else is using the body? Is it the, the, the higher self is part of the possession. You possess the higher self. Your heart is the, the possession that they get. So your heart, soul area, your heart and soul are connected in a way that that's what they would possess. And if they get enough hearts and souls, it gives them much power. So higher self even suffers from that. Yes, the higher self becomes dark as well. Dark. Yes. So the reptilian Because heart? when you sell your heart and soul for those kind of things, your energy becomes dark. Oh. Your intention is no longer pure. Your energy darkens. So the higher self of reptilian is dark, and now the higher self of the human becomes darker. Correct. Uh, what percentage on, the, on Earth would be involved in soul selling? I do not know. I have no clue as to what percentage. I have never really looked into that. That's fine, whatever. I'm not that interested, but that was a nice question, and I wasn't that... Interesting question. I will look into it. But I do not like to dwell on dark subjects. Yeah, let's matter. talk about something fun. 
So next question was again from Mike was about sex. Yes. Um, One of my favorite subjects for humans. How far up in vibration does it go? Say the Ur Mother Earth, does it have a sex? Mother Earth is sexual in some ways, yes. She, she is... She receives the seed of humanity. We feed her. All right, so it's a female vibration. It is a female vibration, and I shouldn't have said we because I don't feed her. And the Mars would be the male vibration? No. Is any planet of female vibration, or there are male vibration planets? There are, the universe is basically male vibration, in some ways. All right. It is a mix, but um, the occupants of a planet make it male or female. Oh, interesting. That's fine. Um, the spirits, do they have sex vibration? The spirits, yes, there's a form of sexual activity between spirits, yes. Uh, tell me more. Let me tell you about Earth's vibration with sexuality. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think that would be most helpful. Mm -hmm. um, sex is not forbidden on Earth. Sex is something that is actually, can be of a, a very high and light or a very low light, depending on what your intentions are for it. If you look at it with a lower level of light, it becomes a lower level of light. Mm -hmm. If you, if you look at it as a wonderful high-minded thing, it could become a very high-minded thing. Mm -hmm. Now remember that your intention has much to do with sex. It, it is out of love, out of closeness, out of goodness. Sex can be beautiful, but you cannot hurt other people with it. Mm -hmm. Or yourself. You have to be careful because... Sex is one of those things that, although it may seem wonderful and beautiful, you have to look at it in all of, all of its forms. How are they understanding what's going on? The person that you're having sex with, how are they understanding what's going on? Because this affects your sexual, the, your overall vibration. Because if they're not on the same level of vibration and they're looking at it as a bad thing, this is going to harm you. Because you may not be looking at it as a bad thing, but they are, and you're becoming one. Or you're becoming connected in, in a yes. very, very personal way. Yes. So, when you become connected with that intention of not being so pure, then it can harm you a little. So you must find the people that you connect with in a pure sort of way. Does that make sense to you at all? Thank you. Coming back to the spirits, what the sex between spirits? I mean, disembodied spirits. Six, six uh, seventh dimension and above. Spirits can move through each other. Uh -huh. This is a special vibration. It's a special way of communication, and it's very much like sexuality because they become one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I couldn't tell you what that feels like because I'm not a spirit. But I can tell you that it is... I have seen spirits be, stay as one for as long as three or four hours, you know, in their own time. Or have heard of it, I shouldn't say. I've seen it. Because... Oh, whoa. There's a sound. All right. Um, but... And through that connection, they become greater and more enlightened, even. Spirits continue to grow. Without growth, in any realm, there's no happiness. Do you, you understand that? What's the physics of sexual vibration? Is it only two sexes in the spirit world? It would be three or four or five sexes? I th believe that... In the spirit world, there in some spirit worlds, there is only one because they don't procreate. They just know each other as the entity that they are. There's no sexual equipment, so to speak, but they are sexually become one as an entity. 
So any two spirits would become one, but there is no definition of male and female. Sex. Correct. In some, in some spiritual realms, yes. And in others, they have male, males and females. Yes. And how far up does it go? I do not know the end of it. Sometimes I think it's infinite, but um, we can only go know as high as the seven, seven different um, dimensions, and we cannot even. Oh, you can't reach the the eighth one. No. Oh, so the that's fine. So the Jesus is he male or female? Jesus is male. Are you sure? He appeared male on earth. But he could appear a female, right? Yes, he could appear any way he wants to be. So the energy vibration of Jesus, would it be universal well, I, or certain sex? I believe that he prefers to be male. Ah. But he probably can be either, I'm sure. Because he is mostly energy at this point, yes. And he is mostly light. So he can appear to be male or female, but I believe he likes the male gender. It carries more weight on your planet. Yeah, the angels are androgynous, right? Angels are androgynous, yes, but they do have gender. They oh, are they androgynous do? looking, yes. But angels can gender? mate, but they have, they're not supposed to. Oh, but they can, were, but they're not supposed to. They're, but I don't... See, that poses a question for me, because they do have gender, but they are not to use it. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure why they were created with gender. So, <laughs> so what percent of civilizations in our galaxy have two sexes? Most of them. Most of them. I would say 98%, probably. How That's about, just a guess on my part. How about three sexes? There is only one uh, species that I know that has three different sexual, distinctly different sexual organs. We have channel information that we got androgynous humans as a new sex. Bashar speaks about that. Androgynous humans? Yes. Meaning they have no sexuality or, or they have both? They have both. Yes, there's many. And he says it's a new specific third sex which is necessary for our development. It's not a third sex. It's a third definition of the sex. Interesting. Because what he is talking about is that these people easily are turned toward men or women. They can easily become sexually involved with both sexes. Next question is of our dear friend Laini. Uh, she speaks about a relationship between Galactic Federation and Ashtar Command, and I think I asked you and you didn't have an answer at that time. What's the difference between them, or what's the relationship, connection? Relationship, connection. They're, at this time, they are only just neighbors, so to speak. But they are friendly neighbors, but they're not connected. They will be talking in the future, though, about more of a connection. Star Control, or Command, is... A Star Command? Yes. Uh -huh. okay. However you pronounce it. What did you say? Ashtar command? Ashtar as a person. Yes. Um, more of a dictatorship in some ways, but not really. Um, but that is why they're not connected. He would have to be part of the whole. And at this time, they haven't determined how that would work. So Lightning in, uh, suggested we invite Ashtar to speak, and so we invite Ashtar. Next, All right. next question of yours is... Hold on a minute. Continue. Thank you. So next question was, she was asked for a symbol for meditation. Can you give her a symbol of meditation? Yes. For meditation. For meditation? Yes. A... a a dodecahedron, is that what they, is that how it's pronounced? There is a word like that, dodecahedron. It is 
a multi-sided, how many sides? I think Both. S yes. If you use it as the center in your heart, because once, uh, let me explain this. Picture a dodecahedron in your heart and put light all through it and within it. Then, as you meditate, bring that out. Bring, expand the dodecahedron out. Then it becomes a protection for you outside the body. Does that make sense for you? Because it's, yes. it's on all sides protecting you. Plus, if you keep moving out, it includes your higher self, who then you can speak to. Ah. It, within this dodecahedron light, and move out, and you become, your meditation becomes as wide as you can make it. And you will become an astral traveler with that. You can become very enlightened and see other enlightenments because of that. And I can really have a hard time describing how to use it. But it is a way of traveling and communicating. Excellent. Thank you. We'll do that. Uh, copper pyramids for telepathy. So is copper a good, uh, a good metal to use for making pyramids and using them for telepathy? Yes. How big should it be? Do we have to fit in the pyramid or just, you know, place it on the table, a tiny pyramid would help? You just have to point it at you. Point it at well, the, the Do you remember me talking about the brass cones? I forgot. The brass cones that transport people one ah, place yes, to yes, another? Yes. Brass, yes. And they are somewhat of a pyramid, if you uh -huh. think about that. They are pyramid-shaped or cone-shaped, uh -huh. but uh, they can be as wide as a pyramid, so they would look like uh -huh. sort of a pyramid kind of thing, if some, not divided into the four s sides. But they are in the same point. Yes, yes. Um, now, they have much power, and energy moves in circles much easier than it does in any other form. Um, Energy, be, it, notice how energy created planets in round, suns uh -huh. in round. You, just energy works really well in circular motion. All so, right. yes, a pyramid form just pointed at you with the wide circle facing toward you would oh, be helpful. So it'll be pointed away. It'll be pointed away because that's the side that collects the energy. And the side that is open is the side that gives it out. Does it have to be open on the bottom? It does not have to be. So it can be have yes. a wall on the bottom? Yes, it can be anything like that. Yeah. Do you have any favorite angle for a pyramid? Um, let me put it this way. You can use it this way one day, this way another day. It has different influences, the different ways that you use it. So use it as many ways as you like. And with intention, say I'm pointing it toward this for this mm -hmm. particular reason, pointing it toward this for this particular reason. I want to have clearer thoughts, point it through your head. Excellent. Or if you have headaches, I want to get rid of my pain, point it through your head. Um, the different ways that you use it, it becomes beneficial. Next very important question. Thank you. It was great. We have a lot of information about pyramids, and that enforces that. Mm -hmm. So next question about... Oh, just a second. Violet flame. Some disturbance, sorry. All right, so the next question was about violet flame. It was very important for her, the symbol of violin, of violet flame. Can you tell anything about it? The disturbance sent him away. Oh, it's Jim. All right. Yeah. All of a sudden he was gone. He was frightened and he left. All right. Why don't you lay it down?
<laughs> Sorry I left so fast. But I have to go anyway. But I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. Goodbye, Lakesh. Thank you and very much for all the information. And I will talk to you shortly. I hope I need to get to a class. Uh, good luck on your class. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Uh-oh. I see the red triangles in white. Squares. <laughs> well, it's from right to left? Yes, it is. White squares? White squares and red triangles. I guess our reptilian friends want to... Uh... And there's other symbols, too. But ah. I see those two. What are the other symbols? There's a yellow circle. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And a green square. And what looks like an eye, and it's black, and just one line, one line eye. So, if you are reptilians, then uh, why don't you release uh, Edmund's son and other captives, other 20 or so? We'll greatly appreciate that. He knows why. He knows why. Hello. Are you the reptilian we already spoke to before? Yes. Hello. We are the friendly ones. But he knows why. The they, son, the who is captive? Edmund knows Edmund. why they are bothering him. Okay. But I can't tell you. But Edmund can tell. He said at some point he gave an agreement. Is it right? Yes. Yeah, but now he re retrieved it. The agreement was bonding for a certain period of time. Oh, and when does the time expire? Not yet. Sometime soon? That is his agreement. I see. Thank you for, uh, how about the other captives? They're fine. Some of them had died at the early parts when they were desperate for answers. But now things have changed. So the captives are fine. How about social life and education? <laughs> Not much of that. Some education. A good social life is hard to find. Is it part of your captives, your civilization, or some other reptilians? No, we are not like them. I see. We know all about them. Why do you know all about them? Like knows like. Uh huh. You have uh, you exchange people between each other? No, but we know what they are capable of because we were once capable of these things as well. I see. Thank you. That explains some. We have decided that this activity that they are creating is not relevant to our society. I guess I will change the topic. And, oh no, actually, I'll stay on that topic. What can Gurkvitnir do to help the release of prisoners? They do not have any power to speak to this species of reptilian at this time. They are only aware of how they could capture them into their reality in a non-peaceful way, and they are not willing to do that at this time. I see. Can you have any recommendations? Are you in communication with Griffith here? We do speak. So my question doesn't help them to achieve the goal of releasing the prisoners. We tell them what they are like, what they need to know, if they would like to capture those uh -huh. who are being held, uh -huh. they do not like what they hear. I understand. Um, talking about our reptilian leaders, or leaders possessed by reptilians, is it true that our leaders are possessed by reptilians? Mm, I'm not sure if possession is the right word. Describe what it is. 
it's like controlling a mechanical car. Their implants are used to guide them in certain decision-making scenarios. How bad is it? How profound is it? In several cases it's very profound. You will find that there are leaders in your world that seem not to have a full grasp of reality. Mm -hmm. These are being controlled and are very dangerous. I know only a few leaders. Uh, Russian leader, American leader, are these controlled by reptilians? Korean leader. Korean leader, the North Korean? Yes. So is Russian leader controlled by reptilians? Yes. Really? There is one, yes. The Putin one? Not Putin. Oh, not Putin. No. Medvedev? No. But you will find him soon. All right, so Putin and Medvedev are fine, they're not controlled by reptilians. How about Obama? No. Uh, Bush? No, no American presidents at this time. But there are some Boehner. Can you explain? His name is Boehner. Boehner? In America? Yes. Boehner? Yeah. Thank you. I don't know much of politics. How about UK uh, royalties? No. They're not reptilians. No reptilians could go there. They're protected. David Icke made his career exposing reptilian connections of uh, royalties of the world. But not in England. I see. How about bankers? Yes. Which of those? Rothschilds? I don't know the names. Uh, some of those. This is tedious. Let's speak of something else. Yeah, what is important? Tell me something that I don't know. Your earth grows weak. Okay. Your cold is severe. Okay. It will continue. All right. They are working on that. We are observing how they are controlling. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Oh, technologies? Yes. <sighs> the Earth has gone into a slight wobble in its rotation. Uh huh. That's very dangerous. Okay, more dangerous than politics. More dangerous than anything. I see. They're working night and day to straighten it out. Uh huh. <laughs> it's very, very fun to watch. Fun to watch. Although, we don't mean that it's harmful to you, but it is fun to watch how they are working so hard. I see. They care so much. I see. We care too, but not, not like that. Is our sun changing as well? Solar flares have been very active. I would not say it's changing as much as it is experiencing what the Earth is experiencing on another level. Mm -hmm. mm, I can't stay. Thank you for your visit. Your explanations were very important. Come again soon.
He was a little discomforting because he was thinking about eating something that looked disgusting. <laughs> I could see what he was thinking about. He was planning to eat something, but it really looked really... Oh, oh, look. A live or... I could have been. <laughs> it's really awful. It looked, well, if it was alive, it was split open, but it was like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. It was very ugly. <laughs> Very ugly. Oh, but of course I don't know if he knew I could see that. But I don't think he cared. Maybe he showed it intentionally. Huh? Maybe he showed it intentionally because uh. you ask him if um, if they eat humans, so he wanted to show what they eat. <laughs> oh. That was disgusting. But other than that, it was okay. Oh, I have to go. I've been right. here all day. <laughs> I have to make... But I can't believe it's already going on 4 o'clock. What should I say in the, in, the, in the conclusion? I don't know. Oh. I don't have much to say other than just come, come again. Yeah, that's fine. Anything else? Same old stuff? Same old stuff. Keep those cards and letters coming. No. <laughs> cards and letters? Yeah. No, keep your questions coming. If you're if you have questions, keep asking them. You know. Let's do final. Okay, let's do final um, um goodbye okay. thing. Oh. oh yeah. All right. Oh yes, good. Okay. So um record record started. Um, thank you for watching. Um, it was an extraordinary session. Finally, we got Jesus to speak through, uh, through Jim, and uh, that was exceptional. Um, you know our website, humancolony.org, and you can find us on YouTube, obviously. Search for Human Colony, H-U-C-O-L-O, H -U -A -C -O -L -O. and we welcome your donations. They help us keep going. And... Uh, Gym is open for channeling, uh, for personal sessions. Um, and we will finish up with um, our Om meditation. Om just symbolizes one of the names of God, one of the sounds of God. So it, it means what you put in it, and we put in it, what's our intention today? To help those that are asking the questions, and those that are uh, joining the colony. We want to send out a special thanks to those that really want to help the earth that way so and I think that's a good intention to help the the colony people and their intentions to help the earth I um, respect them much I'd like to go myself but something tells me that um, I've been rejected a couple times <laughs> but hopefully one of these days I'll get to go but so far I know that I've been rejected at least once or twice so, thank you for those of, or light workers that are going up there and helping us uh, figure out this mess. So, they need all the help. We need all the help we can get. So, so. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm.